So I'd assume that the NFL Rules Committee met on a Zoom. And there was a lot of things up for grabs. And in the past meetings for this, they moved the extra point from a 20-yard extra point to a 33-yard extra point. But it was always being sampled in the preseason first. And then they decide maybe to carry it over. This is where things get done in these meetings. This is where the future of the game could potentially lie. This is where the pass interference review got put into place because the Saints got screwed by a ref that lives in Los Angeles, allegedly, in the L.A. Rams tackled their wide receiver on the five yard line and there was no pass interference called uh, the entire city of New Orleans and also a lot of NFL fans were like how do they miss this and how can we review everything else but this and then they put it in that's what this meeting is so this meeting makes real change to the NFL into the game this year there was a fourth and 15 concept that was being talked about to replace an onside kick at the end of the game because the onside kick success percentages were in the dumpster zero for 104 <laughs> that's less than zero <laughs> percent that is less than zero percent I don't know I don't know how but it is and it's unbelievable that we have gotten to this point and the way we've gotten here is with the health of the game, okay? And the kickoff is a play where you got humans who are trying to feed their family sprinting towards one area. And then you have humans that are trying to feed their family protecting said person with the ball. And there's used to be 50 yards of run up to each other here. A lot of football guys, super football guys say the kickoff is their favorite play in football because it epitomizes everything that is football. You're trying to gain territory. You got massive collisions. You got some strategy. But at the end of the day, it's, hey, us and you, brave heart, war, sprint at each other. Like that is the meatheads of football. Love it. Then Dr. Will Smith came out with an incredible movie that opened a lot of people's eyes and then science started coming out about CTE and then stories started coming out about ex-players and how the end of their lives were happening and the NFL very much understood that they had to look out for these players. So the kickoff was one of the things where the stats were showing, hey, a lot of potential brain injuries are happening on this one play. We got to change it. So they change it from the 30 to the 35, hoping for more touchbacks. Then they change, even with the touchbacks, there were still guys running with their five-yard run-up and still blasting each other because that's really the only time they get a chance to make big hits. <laughs> and there's guys in the league that like having like hitting people like that is things that happen so then they move it up to no run up then they had to change it even more they got eight guys within 30 yards of the kickoff line or whatever everybody has their hands team so it became a punt play basically and with doing so with no run up no overload six on one side four on the other none of that you basically eliminated the opportunity for an onside kick to be successful now granted you can get lucky and hit a ball off of somebody or try to hit it off somebody and have it bounce back and you can maybe have a guy fumble a ball if it is a one hop or if it's a low dribbler but the success rate is so low literally zero for 104 so now teams i oh, i forget the percentage I'm sure done the math i think it's like 70 or 75 percent of nfl games are one score games like that the parody of nfl games are next level you look at when the year we were two in 14 there was eight games that we could have won that were one score games that were like one the, the eight that's 10 and 6 to 2 and 14 like that's what the nfl is even though teams are great and some teams are much much better than other teams it always seems as if nfl games have a lot of parody and it feels like the great teams figure out ways to win those close games and the bad teams don't for instance Detroit Lions. Yeah, mm. yeah. Buccaneers too. They lost what seven games by one score. Exactly. This past that's season? just that's just how it goes. So you, if you're looking at the game and looking at the league, you're like, okay, if it's all one score games, and we could potentially even carry this into overtime or get more stuff. We need the onside kick to be something, and that's why the onside kick is so uh, and has been so important because it's another possession. It's just like a turnover. It's just like an interception. It's just like a fumble. That's why when we are operating and using surprise onside kicks, it because we're getting another possession. We're stealing a possession from the other team that you know you're only getting a few of those a game anyways. You got to take advantage of. So they change all this. It made it impossible to happen. And now they're like, hey, listen, we got to give the team that's down because they're probably still in it at the end for their fans, for the gamblers, for the teams, for this league. We got to give them a better chance. Fourth and 15 idea was floated out there, which then puts a lot of 
you know, responsibility on the refs not to mess it up, which they normally do. You call a pass interference, bang, we could potentially be extending the game or giving a team a loss that basically shouldn't have lost if it's a wrong pass interference, hands to the face, roughing the passer. There's a lot of thoughts that the refs could then control an onside kick situation with the fourth and 15. And anybody who has eyes, hey, cool glasses, glasses. anybody that has eyes knows that the refs sometimes blow it. I mean, that is just sometimes, and it's not their fault. Players are moving faster than they've ever moved before. There's split-second decisions they got to make. And us as fans, probably in the past, wouldn't have known they made these mistakes until the technology is so good that we see literally every single pimple and maybe body fat that you have after Thanksgiving on the camera, which is something I always feared. Need a looser camera uh, or looser jersey for December, please. What's that for? Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas is around. Let's go ahead and look out for your guy because we wear all white anyways. Let's get a little bit bigger but the technology has shown that, oh, these guys are making mistakes. I think it was right not to pass the fourth and 15 at the current moment. But if we get the pass interference review fixed and we get maybe review system or fixed, which they did talk about, which was a sky judge operation, but they didn't want to describe it as such. And I had said that in the XFL, as soon as they did their review, as soon as Dean Blandino, uh, Oliver Luck in the XFL, Vince McMahon in the XFL did the reviews, the NFL should have been like, boom, that's what we're doing. Everybody likes that it feels like it's right let's keep it moving they did not do that but they will test out something but not really testing out anything they're making it appear as if they're trying to fix the review but not really much is changing they need to just adopt the xfl style the nfl is a little bit slow with things expect that to come in next year also expect the fourth and 15 to come in next year if that comes in in a proper fashion there's a couple other changes they made designated return from IR goes from two players to three players this is a big deal whenever they made the designated to return IR just a few years ago it was beautiful because you get a star player hurt in week one and maybe he's able to recover 10 weeks okay we still got half a season left at this point we paid him a lot of money he's a big part of our uh, our team an unfortunate happening in the first game now he's out for the year they made the designated to return you think it has to be 10 weeks I think like J.J. Watt last year was on that, right? Like, yeah, I don't know how many weeks it is. I think Six it's eight. or eight weeks or whatever it is. That was a good decision. They do. They bumped it. They have it at two. They bump it up to three. This is good, especially with the modern technology that we have, the modern rehabbing we have, the information we have. Guys come back from injuries a lot faster than they used to. Let's get them back in the. Hey, let's get them back in the game. In Stars the game. playing the football is good for the football league. That is just yeah. Eight weeks you have to wait. Um, defenseless player protection has been expanded on kick returns and punt returns once again this is because of the study that i mentioned uh seven minutes ago probably <laughs> about the kickoff and return special teams being very dangerous because it's a lot of run-up uh and there is uh prevent of manipulation of game clock with multiple dead ball fouls so when the clock is running above five minutes in the fourth quarter okay because i think it stops anytime Ah, you get it. When the clock is rolling and you have a lead, let's say you have to punt. It's fourth and uh, five. You're on the other team's 38. This was something we had in literally every single week if we ever got there. If you're at fourth and five at the 38 and you're going out to punt and the clock is rolling, you let that clock get or play clock get all the way down, and then you just have your right tackle oh, jump off sides. Okay, so they throw the flag off sides, uh, punting team, Boom, 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 five-yard penalty, uh, replay fourth down or whatever, still fourth down. So then they start to clock again. Okay, so now we're only at the 43. This is a very short punt still at this point. You know what? Run it back. So let that play clock go all the way down. Oh, this time our PP goes and punches our center. Okay, that's a penalty. Five yards, false start, knock the center down. Okay, back it up. Now it's at the 48. Still can do it again, and we just ran 25, 25, 25 off the the clock it's just one of those things where every team had it in and the only person that really ever was able to pull it off bill belichick yep and, and then it happened against them too vrabel yeah, did vrabel. it against him in the playoffs this year which is beautiful absolutely beautiful and vrabel i would assume still tells that story to people how about when we got bill with the uh <laughs> with the offsides on the button like that is something that you do because that's a bill belichick move but we had that in we just never got to the situation where it was they changed that just like the patriots took advantage of the uh um uh, had reported eligible rule yeah. back in the oh, day, yeah. and, and they had they had a bunch of different formations. And defensive coordinators were like, "Hey, come on, 
okay? We already got to prepare for Tom. We already got to prepare for all this. Now they're using wild formations, declaring people eligible. What do we have? We have 15 seconds to figure this out. They got a center at wide receiver over there. They got this whole thing. And Bill Belichick's just sitting there with Ernie on his dry erase. <laughs> Good luck figuring that out. And that is why, by the way, and they're not the only team that does that. Every team is trying to utilize the rules to get an advantage. You have no idea how competitive the NFL is and how everybody's trying to find loopholes in everything. It just so happens that it feels like every single time that gets figured out, the loophole gets found, it's the Patriots. And that is why it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback for them. They're still going to win games because old Bill Belichick and Ernie got that dry erase board. Mm, yeah. And like you see, clause four here of this rule doesn't state <laughs> that we can't have seven quarterbacks on it, right? We can have a quarterback at center, maybe do the side snap thing like the rugby people. And then you have Jared Stidham throw it over here to Hoyer. And then Hoyer will throw it to our center that's eligible <laughs> like that. Is, that is something uh -huh. that you can do and yep. they will do and that's the mindset of a guy that's good the nfl rules committee also had permanent expansion of automatic replay reviews to include scoring plays uh even whenever it is negated by a foul so let's say uh anthony degilio is at running back shout out to Diggs. this was back when Diggs had it too yeah. he, he might be back there by the way we're mm -hmm. not boy, Tony. indiana Diggs is getting very skinny mm -hmm. so i'm quarterback and uh mitt is offensive of lineman we're on really? we're on the three yeah mitt's on there you too man you're yeah. in there too hey hey Clyde, <laughs> well, you're, well, i'm just saying Clyde, you're playing center you're, you're gonna get sacked if mitt's guarding well, your blind side well, it's a run play i'm not getting sacked. okay, okay this enough. is on yeah, Diggs. Yeah, but enough. so i hand the ball off to Diggs. Diggs shakes a guy in the backfield on uh the other team's Woo! three Whoop. shake somebody on the two Whoop. then Mitt here since he's had to block so long and it was supposed to be a quick play he gets out of order he blocks a guy but then he tackles him oh. okay Diggs gets in though right right past Mitt's ass there after he tackles it holding call is called negates the penalty the nfl now will review that play because he did get into the touchdown right so they're saying they're going to review every single touchdown and turnover even if it's negated by a foul so does that mean if that hold wasn't egregious and they review that is the hold going to get potentially taken back and the touchdown's going to remain i don't know i don't know if we read the rule right but the way we read it back and forth a couple times and try to break it down that's what it feels like like they made happen is this good for the league is this bad for the league is a hold call going to get overturned and if that happens people will lose their mind you will see offensive linemen you will see defensive linemen you will see that'll be a big deal like, oh we're overturning holding calls now like it'll be a big deal why yeah but my thing is why review the touchdown or turnover if there is a flag on the play that negates the play if you're not going to review the flag like there's no yeah, well, no is, point and is even, that what you're reviewing? Are you if, if that, there's a yeah? I assume they're reviewing the flag, right? Because the touchdown. I mean, okay, unless it's here a we close, go. That's here we go. Box. Aaron Rodgers. Okay, Aaron Rodgers rolls right there in the red zone, probably 15 yard line. Devontae Adams runs like a uh, a post corner. Aaron throws it up to the corner. Devontae, uh, Kyle Rudolph's mm -hmm. pushes guy catches it two feet in. Pass interference, offense, touchdown. Uh, overturned because of the because of the the pass interference yeah. are they reviewing that and now is pass interference potentially a reviewable play that could be overturned <laughs> i don't know I, because this is a very interesting situation now and we might not be reading it accurately but it is what it said the word said permanent expansion of automatic replay reviews to include scoring plays slash turnovers negated by foul did we just break that down? Can't wait to see how this unfolds. <laughs> and he added Walt Anderson to the whole thing. Oh, That's really good for football. Yeah.